Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and show you guys, or I guess give you guys my first impressions of a game called Chronicon, which you can actually find on Steam. I think it's about $10. And I have to say off my first impressions, it is totally worth it. Uh, this and Dead Cells that I played recently, even though they're completely different genres, very, very good games. So Chronicon is essentially kind of like a huge hack and slash RPG, similar to, I don't really want to say Hero Siege, but it's, it's kind of like Hero Siege, but it's nothing like it at all. So I kind of want to go ahead and just show you guys the hero that I was playing. My level 25 Warlock, I've been playing for about four hours. Uh, and this is pretty low level, you know, I was going through, talking with the developer a little bit, just having some fun. And you can actually change your difficulty, kind of like Diablo, the way it would work. You know, you have like, like not Paragon levels, your difficulty levels, um, such as your Torments. So this can be changed at any point in time. So I'm playing on Veteran, and you can see the bonuses for each one. Um, now, one thing I do want to explain is I'm playing on a controller. The game is optimized for keyboard and mouse, so a few things will feel a bit clunky on the controller. So I would highly recommend for you guys to play with keyboard and mouse. Um, now... So, to explain the basics of the game, you pick one of four classes. You've got the Warlock, the Paladin, the um, uh, Warden, and the Berserker. Each class has four different skill trees within itself. So if you see here, I'm currently playing, uh, I'm playing the Lich spec, and you can play it, you don't have to just have one, one spec, you could have multiple ones. So I've got Corruptor, which is poison based, Lich, which is frost based, Demonologist, which is fire, and Reaper, which is like, I don't even want to say damage over time because each one has its own damage over time. So this is like uh, just shadow magic. And then between each one, you have like summons and whatnot. So if you look at the pluses, how there's pluses on each one of them, those are the active skills. So for example, say I wanted this skill, excuse me, this skill. I can pick between detonation, hell pit, and heat wave. Each one's going to do some different things. However, these two are supported onto this skill and will increase its effectiveness, you know, or increase the area, debuff the boss, etc. So you can still kind of play around with different things. Now the unique thing though in this game is that trees synergize with each other. So at the end of each tree, you're going to find a, a passive or an act, I guess, I think they're all passives, um, that'll synergize with another tree. So fire skills may also trigger the sudden death skills from the reaper tree, which would be like a passive that procs. So now you're doing one elemental damage property and it's proccing another one. But it's cool because this is like deep into the line. So this is like, you're not getting this until like kind of like mid game, which is pretty cool. And there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of play around with your character. And I personally really like that. I like the ability to kind of really create something that I want. And I think that's a lot of fun. So right now I've got, um, I've got a frost mage, like I said, and it's pretty fucking cool because like the way it works is you pretty much would have like, um, well actually I'll just show you guys, it'll be a lot easier to show you. Um, so I got distracted, something popped up on my screen. But the next thing I want to go into is show you guys the gear, because the gear is a little, I would say, kind of odd to play around with. And again, it's going to be a lot easier on mouse and keyboard, but basically you have to show your stats on all your gear, and all of your gear can kind of have proc chances on them. There's actual set bonuses, there's, you know, tiers up to legendary, and then I think there's like red is the highest tier. Uh, and it's actually really fucking cool. And like you can see there's different effects on them. So this would be like a unique bat staff. Um, satellite has a proc. A molten orb circles the player, casting firebomb every second, dealing fire damage. Uh, have a chance to summon a twister that moves around randomly, dealing 52% ethereal damage. And that's pretty fucking cool as well. Uh, one other thing to do I completely forgot about is you actually have a mastery. I believe this is kind of like Paragon level. And there's a bunch of different ones you can play in between, and I believe you can max them all in the end. I'm not 100% sure on that, but these are like your passives to kind of upgrade your character. Mini K, you want to come up here, buddy? Come on, buddy. Good boy, Mini K. Good boy, Mini K. You want to say hello to everybody? All right, so let's go ahead and jump on into the game and show you guys kind of what it's like. So as of right now, I'm still progressing through like the campaign, kind of. Um, so we're currently like in the campaign right now. And I don't know exactly, well, I wouldn't say I don't know exactly, but uh, it's kind of like you, you play through this storyline, sort of, and it's it's pretty much just like hack and slash, you're constantly killing, and my audio on my headset just went out, I hope you guys can still hear it. Um, and every so often you'll actually get a boss encounter, and the bosses will do uh, different attacks as well and whatnot. So some issues with the controller support for people who are kind of curious 
is you can't really free aim, I guess you could say. Like with a mouse and keyboard, you can kind of like, you know, aim where you would want to cast. This one will always target like a monster and it will target as far away as possible. So it makes it difficult to kind of hit something in front of you if you wanted to prioritize that or even something in the back line. Uh, in terms of like, in terms of like um, going through all the loot and the items on keyboard, on keyboard it's a lot easier to navigate and on mouse, or sorry, on controller, you would have to like hold Y and you can look at them and you can see the base types of the items and kind of what they add, <clears throat> which makes it pretty easy to kind of like filter through and see like, okay, I want this or okay, I don't want this. And there is even like some type of loot filter you can enable, which would force you to hold Alt uh, and you can kind of like, I believe you can set it to show like different rarity tiers as well. As for the damage text that you see, you can change this if you don't want to see like shit all over the place. You can make it so you only see critical strikes. I believe you can disable it almost entirely. There's a bunch of different options to play. You can you can change your UI. You can make it, um, uh, what is it? You can make it smaller. You can make it larger. You can make it so that your inventory is smaller. It's very customizable, which is actually really really nice. And it's cool because there's like a bunch of synergy you can do, like I was explaining before. Oh oh whoa. There we go. You also have kill streaks, which do reward you with bonus experience. And you can see the kill streak kind of, uh, it's like 128 right there. It's that little yellow bar. Actually, I think I just got two levels from all of that. What the hell? <laughs> That's some mad XP, dude. So the Warlock class itself also has its own mechanic. It has this soul generation thing, and you can spend your souls to enhance certain abilities or grant yourself certain buffs or even increase your damage later on by holding the souls. And again, like I said before, you're not limited in any type of way with your passives. You can or, or your actives either. You can spec into as many trees as you'd like and, you know, pretty much just move your points around. Uh, one other thing that's really cool as well is that respecking is extremely cheap. It's literally just a little potion that you buy and you just re you just click it once and it resets everything, including you can reset your mastery and you can also reset your active skills as well. So you don't ever have to worry about fucking your character up. I don't think it gets expensive later on. I'm pretty sure it's always gonna be pretty cheap. Now the basis of my character, cause I know there's just shit flying all over the screen, is basically, this is my auto attack. That you see this little circle? that goes around monsters, and then I have left bumper, which is that. When my left bumper hits a target, they take increased damage, I get an attack speed bonus, and every time I hit them, uh, they take an increased amount of, well, they take actually a flat amount of cold damage, I believe that's based on my weapon damage, it's some, something similar to that. Also, if you look on the bottom left, you can see potions, which you would have for buffs and whatnot on the uh, keyboard or on the controller, it's just the D-pad, so it's very easy, you can just jump between them. Uh, and kind of like allocate your, well not allocate, but just jump in your points. One downside with the game is there is no uh, online multiplayer, and I don't believe he said he's going to be able to implement a multiplayer. Maybe if we're lucky sometime in the future, it's just the way the game is set up right now, it's not super compatible for that. However, there is um, local multiplayer, meaning you could play with, you know, your friend who came over and whatnot. And I'm actually going to be doing that today on the stream. If you guys see this video, probably a couple hours from this video going live, if not even sooner, you'll see me playing with my roommate, uh, Jake. And because I'm going to be playing on a controller again, I'm going to be trying from a melee perspective rather than a range point of view. Um, that way I can see because the, the combat should be a lot smoother. I'm going to assume playing on a controller as a melee character because I would just aim and swing rather than have to try to aim with a controller. But it's still totally fine. Like, I feel totally comfortable playing like this uh, with a controller, even though, like I said, it's not 100% optimized. Oh, whoa, whoa, what is that? Let's get out of there. I do not want to be in there. If the game feels too dark for you as well, I know a lot of people were complaining about that on the stream. This is just a setting I like. I like playing in the dark. Um, I think it just, it really brings out like the art style of the game. You can see things a lot easier, even though it's a lot more dark. If that makes any sense at all, I don't know. Uh, so that's kind of just like a personal thing I like to do. But literally when you start the game, you can actually like change the setting. It's like the first thing you do. You know how like you get a Nintendo Wii for the first time and you have to change some settings? I don't know if you guys are that old or young, <laughs> but it's kind of like that. Uh, so that's pretty cool as well. And you would have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six skills. So minus your auto attack, I believe five skills. I don't know if you can get more than that. Uh, this is kind of what I'm working with right now. 
And I believe people are telling me there's ultimate skills too. I have no clue anything about that at all. Let's see if I can pop open a boss. I'm gonna hope there's a boss like somewhere over here. No. Um, what else is there? There is uh, gambling in the game. There's crafting in the game. You can see like this would be my crafting resources here. Um, oh, okay, I almost got fucked by that. There's uh, gems that drop, so you can socket them into your gear. It's it's honestly really well developed, and I'm pretty pretty excited to see how far I can get in it over the next couple days. Also, uh, this one's like this one's like kind of like a really simple one, but you can you can toggle. There's an item volume, or basically, um, if like rare items drop, like legendaries, it actually makes a noise because I know there is loot like flying all over the place. But anytime a legendary drops, it would it'd make a little ping sound, so you don't ever have to worry about that. Which is also really fucking cool. Oh. And there are actually quite a few skills that have skill effects. I know the, the couple that I'm using right now don't really have much skill effects. Uh, but one of the skills I got earlier, like, I just didn't spec into it. It's basically Frozen War from Diablo 2. You shoot it and it just shoots out projectiles, so I apologize for not doing the game, uh, justice right here, right now. Uh, and then it's very easy. You could just portal back to town, for example, take your portal, and bam, you're good to go. So I really like it. I think it's set up pretty fucking well. Um, anyway, that's pretty much about it. My phone is ringing, so I'm gonna have to catch you guys later. Hope you guys have a wonderful time. I'm gonna go talk to my hooker. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.